very first thing that I remember is essentially my posture. My posture is actually crucial to the success of an organizational line drawing. Um, and I start off with a general gesture in which I determine my, um, my format. I've basically got a very close format that is longer than it is wider. And so my format is going to be a um, vertical format rather than a horizontal or landscape format. So that's the very first thing that I do. Remembering my posture, what I start off with is a general gesture. And the gesture basically determines the placement of my subjects, or my objects in this case, as it is a still life. And I'm not really thinking about scale, even though I've got a lot of practice in this. Um, I'm always thinking about scale. Okay. And once I've got that, I'm ready to start my organizational line. Organizational line can be thought of as the skeletal framework of your subjects. Okay? So the very first thing we're going to talk about are axis lines. And I draw an axis line for almost everything in my picture plane. This referring to my picture plane. Axis lines are also existing in um, ellipses, which is what I just drew. An ellipse is just essentially a circle in, um, in perspective. I draw transparently and I focus on a home base or a focal object. And that's going to be my central position, centrally positioned green bucket. Okay? I generalize the bucket into a generic shape. I extend my lines into space, and this will come into play when we get into perspective. And I draw it as if it were transparent. The proper way to draw a ellipse, and an ellipse in space turning away from me, is always going to be straight, and it's going to be perfectly horizontal, fixating, fixing a 90 degree position. Okay? So what I do is I draw an axis line horizontally and vertically, and I basically, notice how locked my arm is, I basically just rotate my arm until I sort of get it right. And I use the axis line in order to determine whether or not I've got a symmetrical ellipse. You see how I use that? I don't really get my ellipse, get my ellipse, you know, like really get my ellipse until I'm sort of ready at the end. Obviously, I'm dealing with what material, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, and then I can just sort of indicate the other stuff around it. Obviously, it's a lot thicker and a lot denser, and I've got more information. Then I use spatial relationships in order to determine the placement of everything else. I notice that there's a little sliver of space in between here, the side of my bucket, and my uh, paper towel which means if that sliver is there, then this can't possibly be there. So that spatial relationship is going to determine where that sits in space. And it's about, oh, I'd say half of the thickness of this, maybe a little bit more. And I pretty much got that. Remember my home base, I'm always referring to everything relating to home base. I'm not going to really get details in there yet. And I make sure that it goes up into space and extends beyond that. Then I use another spatial relationship. I just drew this uh, handle thing, right? And it's around, oh, I don't know what angle to make it at. <gasps> well, what am I going to do? I use a technique called sighting. Sighting is especially important when using perfect posture. Sighting is basically extending your arm, closing one eye, and tracing the angle, I'm tracing this angle right here, in space. Now, if I very, very carefully just rotate my body, I can get the appropriate angle of any long line within my picture plane. Okay? I'm a little bit off there, so I correct it. What I'll do is I'll extend it in space and I'll trace it on my drawing, see if I got it. Which means I can use a spatial relationship to determine where this little red pot is. And I see, oh, there's about that much space in between this. And there's actually a trick for measuring this, which we'll show you at a later date. 
I see that this is just ever so slightly lower than this spatial relationship. I can actually cite that, which I will. Even though I don't really see it, it's transparent. I can get the angle right, which will tell me the placement. I draw the ellipse, even though I've got a ball in it and I don't see the ellipse. Then I draw the ball within that form. Notice that I can pretty much draw a perfect ball if I just very, very lightly encounter my hand with this picture plane or the, the paper, and then I can just sort of find the perfect ball and draw a little bit denser. It's not imperative that it be absolutely perfect. Then I've got this big shape in front of this, and I see that there's a little tidbit of space in between here and here. I know that it's a triangle form, so I will draw a triangle first. Even though I do see an ellipse, I will draw a triangle first. I'll extend the lines into space. I'll draw its little nubbin at the top. And then I'll draw its ellipse. Even though I don't see the ellipse, I draw the ellipse because that is going to allow me to get the bottom part of my still life. Then I've got the bone behind it. And I see that the bone ends here. It's around yay big. And it goes off of my picture plane. Okay, But I do have a wonderful piece of paper here which I'm going to cite. I notice that pretty much everything is going to have an angle. Everybody see how I do that? Citing that angle, I pretty much got it right. But I've also got an angle behind here. And I say, okay, well, where does the actual table end? Well, the table ends right about here on my cup. And it ends right about here on my bone, which will give me the direct angle of the table. But I can always use my sighting to check my work. At the point at which you're ready to resolve your forms, to really get them correct, um, to get the little information that we're also keen on drawing, you can start to resolve your edges using your vine charcoal. Okay? That is not yet a contour. You're just um, basically just determining your value, um, I'm sorry, your um, volume by simply just, I'm not that boring, am I? I hear all these yawns. Melissa. It's just Monday. It's just Monday. Anybody see any good movies? I shouldn't be talking like this. I'm uh, going to be on YouTube. I note that this creates an ellipse, so what I'm going to do, it's actually almost a perfect circle from where I'm standing. I'm going to try to create a perfect circle. Everything has an ellipse, so this is going to be at an angle. I create the perfect circle behind it, and then I can resolve it. And I've got a volume in a believable volume indicated in space. Okay? This is the point at which I would fast forward all of this stuff. But you're getting the gist of it, right? This is the point at which you can describe your edges. Um, and I will not continue to draw this um, whole thing in contour. What I will do is indicate it dark enough that you can essentially see major detail and be able to recognize the space. Now, give me a good reason why I do this. How can this be helpful? This is just extraneous work that your college professor is asking you to do to make your life a living hell. Why do I put an axis on everything? What do, well, what's the purpose of an axis? Uh, oh. What? Balance. Balance? To tell if anything is leaning? Oftentimes people will lean their shapes to the right or the left. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're new to drawing. What other things? Why do I extend my lines into space? What did I tell you? You can stop recording. <laughs>